Well, this, this wraps up our fantastic group of, of wonderful speakers, uh, except me. I've just got to try and do something to wrap this together and, and make people feel excited as they leave today. And I, I want to take you back to the four planks. I want to take you back why we're here. It's about universal literacy, that everyone's got to be interested in science, whether or not you're a scientist or whether you're going to use science directly. But if you want to be part of this planet and part of this society, you have to understand it so you can make the right decisions. Personal decisions for yourself, decisions when you vote. We need science out there, literate people, for a democracy, and I think that's really a terribly important one. Science is part of our culture. Yeah. Absolutely. We need open communication. I think what's scary about what's happening in the States is if they're not going to measure the very important aspects of what's happening in society, what's happening in terms of climate change, what's happening in terms of incidence of problems, then of course they won't exist and that's absolutely very scary. We must get the data out, we must share it, we've got to actually ensure there's no suppression of information. This informed policy is something that's very close to my heart and I'm going to come back to that. And we need stable investment in the future of science, not just for this nation, but for our global collaborations. Because it's global collaborations that's going to stop things like the bloody Tronado machine. The ter God, Terry, terrible. But um, I come from an area of science which isn't about uh, discovery of, of, of new uh, widgets or new uh, things that you can sell like drugs. I come from the science of prevention. And there's just so many wonderful things that come from both the science of discovery that we would never know about, those spin-offs that came, like polio vaccine came because someone was interested in looking at monkey kidney cells or something and looking at viruses. But the, the aspects of public health that are driving me to be so positive about science is that every aspect of the health and well-being of the population requires almost a whole of society aspect of science. So that your health and your well-being and the health and well-being of the population depend upon climate change. They depend upon environmental degradation not occurring. They depend on how we interact as people, the social scientists, our behaviours. Why are we seeing so many kids with mental health problems? What about substance abuse? These are not singular problems with simple solutions. They are complex, wicked problems that require very special science working together. We call it, you know, the collaboration across those things. Look at the inequalities in our society. They are impacting very negatively upon the health and well-being of our population. They require science as well. If I had, li good example, if I had lived in apartheid South Africa as a public health doctor, I would have fought against apartheid as the most important public health intervention that I could do, as many public health people did in South Africa and were thrown out because of it. So, we have to go out and demand that science is valued Science is part of our culture. We are not to be denigrated. Scientists should be valued and accepted and listened to and their data used and interpreted. And, and how exciting it will be in the future if we have the best data in the world on all the aspects of our society that's important brought together, analysed intelligently and interpreted by a media that's up to speed. The ABC science has got to be supported really strongly because it's really the only area of good scientific reporting in the nation. And then, what how exciting it will be if we have a response where we get evidence-based policy, where we have scientific measurement that's going well, and we have a society, therefore, that is built upon an evidence base of rigor rather than any kind of other thing. So that's the future we want. Thank you. Well, wow. thank you very much, Fiona Stanley. We've had a wonderful day today. Thank you all for very for coming along and marching for science today. Yes, science, not silence. Science. <laughs> what do we want? Science. When do we want it? Now. Okay, we're going to do one more, and it's going to be about evidence-based policy. 
and it's going to be after peer review. So this is going to be a bit of a tongue twister if you can fit it in. What do we want? Evidence-based policy. When do we want it? After peer review. It's important, okay? So, are you ready? What do we want? Evidence-based policy. When do we want it? After peer review. Thank you very much, people.